I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my Good morning. If you just joined us, welcome to the weekend sports breakfast live on Talk Sport. Uh, we've got some sad news. Kate uh, is here from the news desk. Morning, Kate. Good morning. Yes, it's with great sadness that Talk Sport can confirm the death of our former cricket correspondent Jack Bannister. He's passed away at the age of 85 and was our colleague here for 15 years. Very sad indeed. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Cheers, we Kate. will be paying tribute to Jack Bannister, um, who uh, has died this morning, uh, throughout the morning here on Talk Sport. Um, Andrew McKenna of Talk Sport uh, did three foreign tours with Ban- Jack Bannister and worked uh, repeatedly with him here at Talk Sport and has paid tribute to him. So good that he could go by one name, Jack, even though it actually wasn't his name. John David Bannister was born in Wolverhampton and played for his beloved Warwickshire for 19 years. Following his retirement from playing, he was instrumental in the setting up of the PCA, the Players' Union, and was a broadcaster for more than 30 years, the last 15 with us on Talk Sport. John Bannister became Jack purely by accident. He told me the story that at the end of one of his early seasons in the game, he was nominated for the Young Player of the Year Award and travelled to London for the ceremony. He was victorious, but the winner was announced as Jack Bannister. And sportsmen and dressing rooms being what they are, of course, it stuck. Whatever they called him, the right arm seamer took wickets. He finished his career with 1,198 from his 374 first-class matches, including all 10 in the innings against the combined services team that cost him just 41 runs, the best figures recorded by a bowler for Warwickshire, beating Eric Holly's 10 for 49. His level of experience, expertise and understanding meant that a career in the media was always likely. A regular newspaper writer, he was easily able to switch to broadcasting, both for TV and radio. For TalkSport, he was involved in the famous tour of South Africa when England were two for four on the opening morning. The win in the dark in Pakistan, the trip to the West Indies, which saw Steve Harmison 7 for 12 in Jamaica and Brian Lara's world record 400 not out in Antigua. And the 2-1 series win in South Africa, which led to the Ashes series win of 2005. Listeners were used to someone who they could trust to give them an accurate assessment of a match and predict the way it would develop. Someone who could and would offer an opinion and explain why he believed it was so. Even Geoffrey Boycott called him Uncle Jack. Cricket and talk sport have lost a real friend. Yeah, he was uh, a legend here on Talk Sport, Jack Bannister. Uh, occasionally a little bit uh, grumpy, but always, always the professional. And we will miss him very much indeed. Uh, we're going to talk to Goffy uh, of Drive. Darren Goff joins us this morning. Uh, in uh, He's in the Maldives at the moment. Morning, Goffy. Morning, Goffy. Hi, Goffy. We've obviously got a little bit of a problem with the line from the Maldives. Uh, we'll try and get him back up again for you. No, Can there. you hear me, guys? Yeah. Oh, well done. Morning, Goffy. Good morning. Good morning. Very sad news this morning about Jack Bannister. Yeah, uh, yeah, great bloke, Jack. I mean, you got to hear, he was Jack to everyone in cricket, um, well-known character. And he basically summed him up there, um, Mako, and he said he's a very opinionated guy, honest, knowledgeable, and passionate uh, which people respect. And I think when you've played the game like Jack did and then you went into uh, the media and to have the opinions he had, he always backed it up. You could argue all day with Jack Bannister. And, and I've done it while we've worked on talks for it. I'm sure Mickey has and you have Georgie mm-hmm. yes, at times I where... I mean, I have had plenty of debates and arguments with him on TalkSport, especially of late uh, over the Kevin Peterson situation. Uh, But he always backs it up, uh, puts his uh, side of the story across, and he makes you start doubting your own opinion. Uh, And that's what Jack did. And... But this guy, I mean, like I said, he played cricket, he was a bookie, um, he helped the PCA, as Mac uh, touched on there. He was mainly on the pension side, which a lot of cricketers are going to be grateful, uh, because back in the day, uh, you can imagine, that was one thing uh, sportsmen didn't really uh, plan for retirement in cricket. You're finished. Uh, it's your mid-30s. 
um, with no prospects. So a pension is pretty, pretty uh, important. Well, we're taking your tributes this morning uh, to Jack Bannister of Talk Sport of Warwickshire Cricket Club and uh, a great broadcaster who sadly passed away at the age of 85. Uh, he will be much missed by us here at Talk Sport, uh, a man who was never wrong, brilliantly opinionated, unbelievably well um, informed in the game of cricket and uh, very much a staple here at Talk Sport for many, many years. Uh, part of Jack's legacy uh, will be his um, role in forming the Professional Cricketers Association. He was instrumental in it and uh, he is one of the reasons that cricket today is in uh, rude health and cricketers also uh, can financially put themselves on a good footing in the game uh, with successful careers here is jack talking about his role the very first meeting we had the uh, fred rumsey the former uh, somerset and worcester bowler went round the country in 67 asking would there be support for uh, uh, forming uh, the equivalent of the pfa and the meeting we had in london was addressed we're back to football again by jimmy hill and cliff lloyd who was secretary of the pfa we got going and we were able to organize all sorts of things uh, we had an accountant called harold goldblatt who was responsible for the the pension scheme which started i was a top um, cap player for for Warwickshire and uh, my closing con my first contract was worth three quid a week my closing contract in 1969 was just under a thousand quid and uh, now well everybody is earning over 20 even the youngsters and the big boys are getting uh, three or four times that amount a medium fast bowler of a Warwickshire, he took 1,198 first class wickets in a career from 1950 to 69. He worked for a long time for BBC's cricket coverage and then has finished his career here at Talk Sport. Uh, we will miss him greatly. He was also wonderfully, wonderfully opinionated and occasionally grumpy and never wrong either, well, which I, I loved I, about him. I didn't see the grumpy side of him, um, but he was opinionated, definitely strong opinions. And, you know, to me, uh, instrumental really on talk sport cricket's coverage down um, also from the world of cricket uh, we've broken the sad news that our talk sport colleague jack bannister uh, has died john norman our cricket guy uh, has worked alongside jack for many years uh, it's very sad news john yeah terribly sad news uh, guys i mean i've been in contact with the family for the last couple of weeks as jack was sadly taken into hospital and you know just have to have your thoughts with them really today um cricket in the last year or so has lost some absolute legends of the broadcast world you know you think of the likes of richie benno jack's uh, best buddy uh, tony Gregg, of course and christopher martin jenkins and you know jack's going to be missed every bit as much not just as a man but as a broadcaster and as someone that you just had to listen to um i've worked alongside and been at talk sport for 11 years now and the amount of times I just stopped as I was leaving the production floor just to hang back, just to hear the last 30 seconds of what Jack had to say, uh, or just stuck around in the lift so I could just hear what he was uh, moaning about Kevin Peterson for doing or <laughs> anything along those lines. The guy, he, he was an intelligent man. He was erudite. He was verbose. Um, and nobody uh, knew more about cricket, the sport that he loved and the sport that he he grew up in and continued in the world of broadcasting once he had to retire. Nobody knew more about cricket than him. So uh, it's a real sad loss for us at Talk Sport and uh, obviously uh, everyone connected with the game that we love. But uh, yeah, thoughts with Jack and his family at this time. Thank you, John. OK, um, let us pay tribute to our colleague here at Talk Sport, Jack Bannister, who died sadly this morning at the age of 85. I'm delighted to have on air to pay tribute to him and talk about his career. Uh, Jeffrey Boycott joins us this morning. Good morning, Jeffrey. Good morning, Jeff. Ah, good afternoon, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, of course, because you're in South Africa at the moment. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, your thoughts on, on the career of the wonderful Jack Bannister? Well, I played against him. That's the first thing. 
and he never ceases to remind me that I was a young player and he bowled me out at Hull when uh, Warwick should be Yorkshire. <laughs> he, was a, he was a seam bowler, but he bowled a mean, what we call a leg cutter. And in those days, we, I think we had uncovered creatures right through till the end of 78. So when it rained overnight and some of the club pitches weren't too good, he cut the ball and he cleaned us up. Um, more than once. In fact, his best figures were against Yorkshire in first last three. I think he got nine. Nine for the bowled Yorkshire at right? 1955. I know he got ten on the combined universities, but his best first class against the county was nine. So he liked Yorkshire. Mm. I got to know him after I finished and did commentary with him. I worked with him on BBC television. In the earlier days, there was only television. There was no satellite TV. And I got on really well with him because I thought he had a great knowledge of the game. He read quite a lot, like I did, and about the past and the great players. And he was very good with figures because he was a bookmaker. Yeah. He had bookmaking things which he sold in Birmingham. So figures, adding things up, and statistics of averages and what have you. Very good on that. So his knowledge was excellent. And a few years later, I was asked to do talk sport radio with your former boss, yeah, and he asked me to put together a commentary team, and uh, I got the rights for him in South Africa and Pakistan, the live radio right, and I put that name forward to Kelvin McKenzie, the boss, and Kelvin said, oh, he's too old. I said, no, when you're doing radio, how does anybody know what age you are? <laughs> True. It's your knowledge and your voice, whether it appeals to the people. And I said, my Rachel told me he's got a fantastic voice for radio. The girls will like his voice. And I knew he had great knowledge. And he did it brilliantly, as I knew he would. And we did commentary in Pakistan and South Africa and what. And then when I moved on, Kelvin sold the business. Jack stayed and became your main cricket man, didn't he? Yeah. So I've known him a long time. I still rang, rang him up every now and again. He was happy as a lark down in Wales. Don't know why the hell he settled in Wales, but he liked Wales. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff, like you though, uh, passionate about the sport that you love, and and never short of opinion. Well, if you're going to work in the media, you have to have an opinion. It doesn't mean to say we're always right. You hope that you have something interesting to say, and that you're going to tell the honest truth. That's what people want. I mean, none of us are right all the time. We give you. An experienced view from our knowledge of playing the game, that's what Jack did. He had, as I said, a great knowledge of the past, the history of the game. Actually, we were very similar in that way, and also we were very similar. When it came to match fixing, one of the first big one was the Hansi Conyer affair. Jack had worked quite a bit. He worked on South African television here. I've been to South Africa a lot. I have a house there now. I played my first tour there in 64 for England. So I'm very fond of the country, and when Andy's country, Andy Conyer, who we knew well, came out, and it came out that what he'd done, we were both of the same passionate thing, that he hurt cricket. As mm -hmm. much as we loved Hansi, and we did, he was, he was a lovely man, excellent captain, good batsman, people like him. You just couldn't believe that, why the hell would he do it? He was, wasn't that sort of guy, but... We were both of the same opinion that he really hurt cricket. Hansi hurt cricket badly. It left a bad stain. And but Jack was very passionate about it. Uh, probably much more than me. I was passionate, but he was even more so. Well, we're very um, we're very pleased to have you on this morning, Jeffrey, uh, to pay tribute. Thank you so much for speaking to us. My pleasure. He was a good man, a top man. But through it all, when there was dark,